Welcome to Modern Farm Business Podcast. This podcast is designed to help the farm leader bring their business to the next level. We'll cover everything from leadership and finance to strategy and planning. I'm your host, Dean Hefta. Most mistakes in business occur because of a breakdown in communication, or more specifically, a breakdown in understanding. As von Goethe said, everyone hears only what he understands. When we experience frustration or disappointment, typically it's the result of unmet expectations, and unmet expectations are an outcome of poor communication. Today, we're talking about some of the hurdles we need to clear to create understanding, as well as some principles that can help us to have better outcomes. There are two challenges that we can face each day as we try to communicate effectively. First are assumptions. There are experiences in my head that I'm not adding to the information that I'm sharing because I believe you will automatically add to what I say. See, when I have you take the truck out west and turn left where the barn was, I'm assuming you know where the barn used to stand, because I do. When I say, take the tractor and work that field, I'm assuming you know how fast to drive, what angle you should go at, and how deep the implement should be. What's happening around us informs our assumptions as well. Are we in a hurry? Are we tired and emotions are running high? Our environment can have a significant impact on what we process and how we take information in. Maybe it's harvest and I say, give the combine a cleaning tonight before you put it away. What I'm not expecting is that the employee does a full power washing with soap and then proceeds to wax the entire machine. It's harvest. We aren't going to do that. My assumption is that during harvest, a cleaning is just to blow the dust out of the air filter, get the garbage out of the cab, and clean the windows. That's it. See, those assumptions are pervasive, and more often than not, we have to be much more specific when we communicate than we prefer. Here's a second one that can be a hurdle to effective communication, and that is definitions. Often simple words can carry wildly different definitions that we don't recognize, and this can get us in trouble. Here's a humorous example that happened to a friend of mine a few years ago. He was at a farm auction. He called up his father and said, hey, they have a couple of bins they're going to be selling. Do you want me to bid on them? The father's instruction was, yes, just don't pay too much. And that was the end of the conversation. As it turned out, the simple conversation was loaded with miscommunication. First, to the frustration of the person at the auction, he had no idea what don't pay too much meant because his father wouldn't give him a number. He just said, just don't pay too much. So he proceeded to bid what he thought was a reasonable price, winning two bins. But the second misunderstanding became apparent when he called his dad back and let him know that he had bought both bins for just a couple of thousand dollars. Flabbergasted, the father asked what kind of bins he had bought. Well, there are 5,000 bushel grain bins. Oh no, the dad exclaimed. I thought you were buying bins to hold the nuts and bolts in the shop. See, when we hear a word, there's an automatic definition that we attach that can affect everything we process from there on. So when I say, go fast, what does that mean? How about slow? Carefully? Stay late? Show up early? Is early 5 a.m.? 7 a.m.? I know some people that think 9 a.m. is early. See, those simple words can be loaded with confusion. As leaders, we have to stop being frustrated when people aren't reading our minds and get focused on how we can get more clear as we communicate with people that are going to have their own sets of assumptions and definitions. One of my key roles as a leader is to ensure understanding in the people around me. To help that, let's break it down into some of the elements that can help us to get better results when it comes to communicating on the farm. 
I have three of them we're going to touch on. And the first of the three is to know the audience. One of the effective elements of good communication is to understand where the people are that we're talking with. Having the ability to dial in our message. So if you're asking your brother to take the truck out to the Johnson farm, there's a lot that you don't need to discuss. In fact, all you might need to say is, could you take the truck out to the Johnson farm? But if you have a new part-timer on board, you'll need to be much more explicit about where they are going, where the truck should be parked, all the things that need to be double-checked on the truck, and so forth. A good model that illustrates how we flex with different people is called Situational Leadership 2. This approach helps us to think of our interaction in stages depending on the development of the other person. So, if they don't know much in a given area, we need to give them very direct guidance, be very clear, very straightforward, and very focused on those basics of what needs to be done. As we work with more experienced people, we shift to more of a coaching communication with them. We don't need to spend as much time on the details or directing the actions, but we need to spend more time supporting and guiding. Next higher yet is a supportive relationship. The other person is quite competent and maybe just needs support in the relationship rather than a lot of clear direction. And the final stage is when you're working with someone who has a lot of competency and a lot of confidence, they just need delegation. In this case, your brother knows where the field is. He knows how to drive the truck, and he doesn't need your support. He's just going to go get it done. The second tool is routines. It's helpful to build some rhythm in how we communicate, and that's going to be driven by who the other person is, what the relationship is about, and what they need. So you can lay out when you're going to check in with your landlords. You just put it on your calendar, and then when that date comes around, you do it. You can decide right now when you're going to have a banker meeting throughout the year. In fact, I encourage whenever you can to get an electronic calendar on your phone and even send invites. If your banker says he wants to meet three times throughout the year, well, just block it out. Pick, pick a day and send the invite. Then you know whether it's September or August or February, whatever it is, it's on the calendar and you can go do it. Maybe you've got some of your team that need to have a 10-minute morning huddle. That becomes a rhythm or a routine, or maybe it's a 30-minute weekly meeting. What's going to serve the group best? As you can see, identify the people and then establish a routine. Schedule it and do it. The same holds true for friends and family. If you've ever gotten to the end of the year and regretted not spending more time with someone you care about, there is an opportunity for planning your routines. The third I'll call medium. This is all of the different tools and methods that we have in order to communicate. Never in history have we had more ways to communicate than we have today, and it's never been cheaper. We have the ability to talk face-to-face, -face, have phone calls, send text messages, emails, instant messaging, FaceTime, Twitter, and the list goes on. Here's where wisdom comes to the plate. The question isn't, what's the easiest for me to use right now, but rather, what will give me the best result? If there's complicated instructions or a complex decision that needs to be made, face-to-face -face or the phone are probably going to be the best. If it's just to inform somebody of something, a text is probably fine. Need to communicate quite a bit of information, but you don't need to discuss it? Send it in an email. Each medium has its place, but too often we can opt for the fast one rather than the right one which means that the people that are willing to spend the time in person and on the phone will have a relational advantage and increase the odds of people understanding their message. A great combo approach is to follow up after the in-person or phone meeting with an email of the main points or any of the actions that need to be taken. There you have it. Take the time to recognize that our communication is filled with assumptions. You know, the things that we believe others know or that they'll be able to fill in the gaps in our message. 
also be clear in defining the words that we use, those words that can cause confusion. What does fast mean? What does carefully mean? What does early mean? To strengthen our communication, take into account the audience. What's their knowledge level? How much confidence do they have? How much detail and direction do they really need? Set up communication routines to avoid lapses in our connection. For some, that may be daily. For others, maybe quarterly. It helps us to do less trying to remember when the last time we talked and when we need to talk next. Use the calendar. Get your communication scheduled whenever you can. And finally, consider the different mediums that are available and when to use them appropriately. Face-to-face gives us the richest communication, but sometimes a text or an email is good enough. My last highlights are these. There's three. Speak simply, assume nothing, and ask for understanding. First, use the simplest language you can. Avoid jargon and technical talk. Nobody complains that somebody is too easy to understand. Next, make no assumptions about the other person's intentions or about missing information. Now, I know it's truly impossible to assume nothing, but my challenge is to be diligent about watching for when you're adding assumptions. And when in doubt, ask for clarification. And finally, ask others to repeat back to you what they heard or what they're now going to do. You can say, hey, I gave you a lot of information there on what I want you to do this afternoon. Just to make sure I didn't miss anything, what's your plan for this project? I'll end with the words of Stephen R. Covey. Seek first to understand, and then to be understood. I hope there's something from this session that you can put to work today. A place where communication and understanding is critical is marketing and financials on the farm. To learn how Water Street Solutions works with farm leaders, give them a call at 866-249-2528 or check out waterstreetconsulting.com. Thanks for joining me today and have a great week.